This is Duke University. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you all please rise. I present to you the daytime MBA graduating class of 2017 and the PhD students of 2017.
Please be seated. Good afternoon, everybody. It's my extraordinary privilege to be the dean of the Fuqua School of Business. And I have to tell you that every day at the Fuqua School is a great day, but today is a spectacular day. Before we get the festivities started, I would like to recognize a few different groups, starting with the stars of the show, the reason we're all here, the graduating students. I'll speak to you all later, but the message I want you to take away from me is thank you for all you've done, all you've given to make this place better. I'd also like to call special attention to three PhD students. Although small in number, if you add up all of the years and the hours that they've been here, uh, it may actually be about the same in terms of uh, the, the, the amount of time. So welcome to our PhD students. I'd also like to thank the people who are here that make this day possible. All of the friends and family who've joined us today and the people who could not join us but made this day possible. For those of you that are here, we are so thrilled that we get a chance to celebrate this great occasion with you. Thank you for your presence. And finally, I'd like to thank the faculty and staff who've poured their hearts and soul into the student experience, who care so deeply about the experience that you all have and are here today to celebrate with us this joyous occasion. So thank you to all of you. And with that, we'll get this party started. And I'd like to ask to join me at the podium here the MBA Association co-presidents, Anna Catone and Chris Castro. All right, good afternoon, class of 2017. <laughs> good afternoon, friends and family. We are excited and grateful to be with you all today. Despite having been called Crooked Castro and Corrupt Catone from time to time during our tenure, there has arisen no definitive proof to impeach us from our posts. So here we are. We made it, Chris. Thank you to everyone who traveled here today. The class of 2017 comes from 37 countries and 36 U.S. states, so we know many of you traveled from far and wide to be here today, so thank you. And thank you to our families who supported us throughout this process. I have the pleasure of welcoming two of my siblings and my parents, Juan and Elizabeth Castro. Thank you for all that you've sacrificed for me. And I get to thank my in-laws who are also in attendance. A specific shout out to my father-in-law who said, and I quote, I need to make sure Castro graduates. <laughs> Hopefully this is proof enough, Rob. And to my family for taking up most of the seats in the audience, and also to my family who is watching at home today. If I listed all of your names, we'd be here for the rest of the afternoon. So suffice it to say, you know who you are. I, I love you guys. To our significant others for all of your support and patience, for somehow being OK with us taking two years off to learn and network <laughs> many nights a week at Tavern and Shooters while you worked real jobs. I'm particularly grateful to my fiance, Mike, who has encouraged me to crush it every single day. And I'm grateful for my wife, Annie, and we're happy to share that we're expecting a baby boy. And we've decided to name him uh, JB Duke, Bill Bolding, Ruskin Morgan, DeColi Castro. 
Uh, my wife is shaking her head, so I'll have to double check on that. Don't worry, I got this bill. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. In the early fall, in early fall of first year, the infamous trek from the green parking lot, I thought about something that my mom said while growing up. She would say that each of her children's personalities could be summed up in three words, head, heart, and will. The first child is head, the second, the heart, and the third, the will. After three, it repeats. Head refers to logic, efficiency, and intelligence. Heart refers to compassion and empathy. And will, will is determination, grit, and fearlessness. Uh, we thought about who might be the head, heart, and will in our co-presidency, and we asked one of our classmates, Bob Bemba, what he thought. And Bob said, well, Anna obviously is the head and the heart, and Chris could be the will because he tried real hard. <laughs> but in all seriousness, instead of labeling who was what, we realized that Fuqua is a place that strives to embody all three at once. Head is how Fuqua challenged us intellectually. Heart is how Fuqua brought out the compassion in each of us. And Will, Fuqua demanded the grit for us to tackle the tough obstacles we would face. First, head. When many of us think of first year, we think of statistical regressions, debits and credits, Porter's six forces. Five. Porter's five forces. <laughs> supply and demand curves. I could go on. On top of all of the coursework, we were learning about entirely new career paths. For example, management consulting. Incredible intellectual fortitude is required to remain calm during a consulting case interview where someone asks you to advise a fictional CEO on how to generate $100 million in profits with only a $1,000 budget all the while trying not to sweat profusely while you interpret 10 pages of data charts, solve math problems in your head, and round to the nearest decimal. Our consulting club classmates, our TAs, and our C-lead members are truly heroes who helped us conquer tough problems. Next, heart. This past year brought many world issues to the halls of Fuqua, including the 2016 US presidential election. I, like many, felt a strong desire to wrap my head around the election and its implications. Yet at a time when I most wanted to gain understanding about my world around me, I felt like I couldn't have those conversations because I was afraid through my questions that I would offend someone or at worst, lose friends. But then Anna and I started getting emails from you all saying, how can we talk about this at Fuqua? Our classmates came together to organize a dialogue in the election, inviting all opinions. I was amazed not only by how many people came to the event, but by how many people stuck around afterwards to continue the dialogue with people that had diametrically opposite positions as they did. These Fuquins demonstrated heart. They came to the table to listen and learn. They showed the heart that creates our loyal community, and by seeing each individual, seeking understanding, and being slow to judge, they showed us that heart. Finally, the will. At the start of first year, when I met my section, giddy is the best word to describe how I felt. Who were these 75 other people? Would any of them become my friend? Did I have anything useful to contribute? I was boiling over with enthusiasm and optimism. When the opportunity to run for the elected position of section representative came up, I thought, that's it. If I show them that I'm willing to do anything for them, then they'll be open to letting me in and being my friend. So I stood in front of my section, I gave a speech, and shortly thereafter, the results were in. I lost. It's true. Re rejected by my peers one month into Fuqua. I felt an overwhelming sense of failure. My mind raced with, what did I do wrong? Why don't they see me as a leader? Maybe I don't have what it takes. But then something unexpected happened. Individuals in my section, people who I had just met, came up to me, they reached out, and they encouraged me not to give up. They helped me find the will to try again. 
If I hadn't learned about failure early on, I don't know if I'd be standing here today. I share this story because rejection is a part of Fuqua. Each of us has a story or two about rejection, yet with the support of one another, we've all found the will to face our failures and keep going. So looking back to when we were transitioning to Fuqua from our past lives, it felt like business school was going to be an idyllic escape from the real world, like summer camp for adults. Yet Fuqua has been more than just a break. It has been a transformational experience in how to think deeply, feel fully, and do fearlessly. After today, as we embark on the next chapter, our call to action to each of you is to think about how to bring head, heart, and will with you. So the class of 2017, will we remember head, treating every day with as much intellectual rigor as we did in the classroom and during recruiting? Can we, the class of 2017, show heart by bringing empathy to tough dialogues with those who are most different than us, like we did after the US election? And finally, will we be fearless and find the will to persist in challenges, even though we know we might fail? And above all, when we leave Fuqua, Will we, the class of 2017, support our friends, our families, our coworkers, our communities in their pursuit of head, heart, and will? If we remember this, then we will bring the best of Fuqua with us going forward. So thank you to the faculty, administrators, and staff for packing a lot into these two years. Thank you to all of our classmates. You all are the head, heart, and will of this place. We will miss you and we can't wait to see what you will do to impact the world going forward. Here's to the class of 2017. <laughs>
Following a class-wide nomination and committee selection process, the class chose a phenomenal speaker. The speaker has been described by her peers as being a servant leader and a well-rounded charismatic Fuquin with a contagious laugh and a bright spirit. Please join me in congratulating and welcoming Katherine Carter to the stage. just prepare. Mm. Class of 2017, you all look so distinguished right now, and I just, I wish I had a, let me see, I do think, no, no, we'll take many photos later. Uh, but I do want to just say thank you for this honor of selecting me to be your class speaker. Um, I want to thank everyone who gave me well wishes through text messages and other things. And for those of you who were like, eh, Catherine, well, here we are. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, before I dive into my speech, I do want to give a few recognitions or acknowledgments rather. So grads, it's not just about us this weekend. We also happen to share this, at least within the US, on Mother's Day weekend. So I want to recognize all the mothers that are here present. Um, <laughs> I especially want to recognize the mothers that are graduating today. I don't know how you did it, but thank you. And my last Mother's Day, I couldn't leave this podium without giving a shout out to my mother, Miss Florence Carter, who I like to call Mommy. <laughs> Mommy is having a moment right there. So Mommy, thank you so much for all the sacrifices that you have made that helped me get to this point. I love you. Uh, my last acknowledgement, then I promise I'm gonna go on, uh, is to a very special person who has been such a supportive and patient rock to me, and that is my boyfriend, Malik. Malik, thank you so much. for all that you've done and for being my hype man this morning. Thank you. So now on to the speech. So actually, I was telling a few of you that a few days ago, I had a completely different speech. And I was practicing it, and I was just like, this is just not giving the Catherine essence that I want to leave you with. So, you know, I drank some wine to bring that out, and just a little bit, and then I decided to, to change it up. So today I will be sharing Kat's key takeaways for moving from Fuqua and entering the big scary world again. It was boxed wine, so please bear with me. <laughs> so takeaway one, there's three by the way. I know a man comment, I need to tell you where I'm going. There's three takeaways and there's also some action items. So that's what we're gonna do. So take a one, takeaway one, is subscribe to the magic of not giving a care. <laughs> I wanted to use something else, but this is a special day. Um, I was watching a TED talk by a woman named Sarah Knight, and hers is entitled The Magic of Not Giving, but she uses the, the correct word. In the clip, she talks about this concept of care bucks. Hers rhymes. She states that care bucks come in the form of our time, our energy, and our money, and that we really have to learn to spend and invest them wisely. During Sea Lead One, we were all tasked, I don't know if everyone did it, but we were all tasked to prioritize the things and the areas that we wanted to focus on during our time at Fuqua. I, of course, always put my family and my friends that had relationships with before school very high on the list. But when I actually take a mirror to the past few years and I look at where I invested my care bucks, my time, my energy, I did not invest most of that to them. In fact, there was a lot of times where I spent time and energy on petty things, like just worrying, things that just didn't bring about anything. Now, when we go back out into the world again, we will be pulled in so many different directions, you know. 
serve on this, show up to work. <laughs> we will have money though. Uh, we need that. But if honestly, if we just went through life and we did everything that people asked of us and we didn't say no at all, then quite frankly, we would be miserable and we wouldn't be living the lives that we want to live. So, as promised, the action item for not giving a care is, is, is there's two parts. There's one is to stop using our energy and our time and our money on things that just don't matter, uh, on petty stuff. We, and then secondly is to really, like we did in Sealy One, is to create a care bucks budget and really list what are the things that we really want to get out of the next chapter of our lives and actually hold ourselves accountable to spending our time and our energy and our money in alignment with that. Takeaway two, one of my favorites, is to be you and bring all of you and at the same time allow others to be them. Outside of our Fuqua bubble, as Chris noted, these past two years have been very volatile, politically and socially. And while many of us may have just wanted to go to school and not worry about that, we simply just couldn't help those subjects permeating our little fuqua bubble. One of the subjects that weighed heavily on me during this time was the relations of, of police brutality against people of color. I know it's not everyone, but there is an issue there. Now, with this issue, I just, I didn't feel like I could come to school and actually have dialogue or discussion about these topics. I didn't want to ruffle anyone's feathers, and so I just weighed, unfortunately and regretfully, that pain in silence. It wasn't until Erica Hines and Noel Kelly, along with other amazing MBAs at top MBA programs, decided to, to have an act, a call to action, to, so that this pain that some of us were feeling about these tragedies, we can open up and discuss them. Now, after this past September, when we had the Wear Black event, where many of you, I was taken aback, the ma overwhelming majority of the FUQA community wore black that day to stand in support of us. It was the first time I felt that I could really bring all of me to school, not just parts of me. Not only that, it even got covered, coverage in the Wall Street Journal and Poets and Quants. It started a conversation in areas and arenas where that conversation had not happened. Now, while I felt amazing about that event, and considering that we have collective diversity, not everyone did. And quite frankly, when I heard some of the comments or things, I got upset. I'm not going to lie, I did get upset. But then I had the opportunity to literally sit around a table with other people with differing opinions, and I heard not only what their opinions were, but what a part of their life experience helped shape them to have that opinion. Now, that did not change my opinion of these events, however, it did give me the opportunity to learn and to avoid giving a very stank face to people <laughs> in the hallway. So now that we leave Fuqua, honestly, we're not going to have as much opportunity to talk to people that look a lot different from us in those types of meaningful ways. But I do have a couple of action items. So for the BU part, it is simply that BU bring you there are so many problems going on in the world. We can't be silent about the things that, that we need to see as injustices and that we see need to help. At the same time, for the second part of allowing others to be them, and this especially goes if you just, you don't have to answer now, but if you look on your Facebook prior to Fuqua, and you step about three feet away from your computer and everyone looks a little similar, a little homogenous, there's nothing wrong with that, but in, especially in that case, and you haven't had the opportunity to really connect with people different than you, then I, that's the action item. Please try to seek those conversations out. And when you do, please just listen. Just listen, no need to qualify their experience. 
I'm gonna bring the mood back up because I can see people are like, ooh, that was heavy. <laughs> so but that leads me to my last takeaway, and it's something that Shane DeColey has actually talked about in his last lecture. Yes, yes, shout out to Shane. Uh, but it's, the take last takeaway is to really just to be happy. Be happy. Before I started school, I, like Shane, read this book called, or I skimmed this book <laughs> titled The Happiness Advantage by Sean Acor. He's a Harvard professor. Oprah loves him. Shane loves him. He's a big deal. His book centers around this notion that your mind works best when it's happy and positive. And it's really happiness and positivity that is able to bring success, not the other way around, which I think some of us can forget sometimes. So I, I, I tried this out, especially through recruiting, because we all know that recruiting is not the happiest of times. So I would normally would have this narrative in my head that, OK, I have to talk. If I have to talk to one more person at this company to show that I'm interested in this job, but I changed that narrative to, I cannot wait to embark on this conversation with this marketing professional to learn if this is a good fit for me. <laughs> when I just made that corny little switch, it really worked and I was able to bring a much more engaged and happy and excited me and ultimately, I fared fairly well within recruiting. I will say again that now I know sometimes it, life is just not a happy time. There will be very significant challenges. If we want to be the people who we aspire to be, there's no way we can do that without having some really lows along the way. I will say that the key action item that I hope we all take is that when we do have those lows, we don't just wallow in them and have a self-pity party for a long time, because that's not where our mind is going to work the best. I hope that instead we choose gratitude. We choose to really put things in perspective and see all the things that are going right in our lives, even if there's one area or aspect that's going really terribly. Honestly, if the worst thing that we had to deal with was rejection over the past two years, then we should consider ourselves extremely lucky. So to close, I'm, I'm wrapping this up. To close, I'm, I'm, our time at Fuqua is up. And I'm actually really OK with that. Um, not like that, but you know, yeah. Uh, but I'm OK with that. And I'm OK with that because I think that these two years, we are leaving this school way better and as much better people than the way we entered. And right now, with the big, scary world looming outside, we are needed. Our better selves, our better versions are needed to help make this world a little less scary. I do hope that you take into some of my key takeaways of making sure that you only give the appropriate cares, that you always bring yourself and your values, you allow others to be them, and most importantly, that you have a life of happiness. So thank you, class of 2017. Thank you, uh, Catherine, Anna, and Chris for bringing your essence and the Fuqua essence in, in your words. Thank you so much. So now I'd like to uh, recognize a few members of the Fuqua faculty and staff. Uh, first, starting with the teaching award winners. We held a ceremony earlier in the week to acknowledge these faculty members, so we're not going to you know, make this elaborate. But I do want to call attention to first Ronnie Chatterjee for winning the Excellence in Core Teaching Award. And to Peter Johnson, who won the award for Teaching Excellence in an Elective Course. Finally, we have Ruth Tolman, who was the Students Staff Choice Award. And Ruth is operating behind the scenes here, making everything work. You can see her back there. So thank you, Ruth. Thank you. 
And now I have the pleasure of introducing our graduation speaker, Kathy Engelbert. When we choose a graduation speaker, we want someone who has achieved real distinctiveness and accomplishment in their careers. We want someone who is a role model in terms of someone you can see and say, I aspire to reach that level in my career someday. And from that level of accomplishment, we're looking for someone who along the way has extracted the wisdom from the experiences that have gotten that individual to that destination. And more importantly, we want someone who shares our values, who really is a true Fuquan in terms of understanding what matters in terms of how you get to your destination. And so I'm extremely happy that we convinced Kathy to be here today. I think when we told her that it was going to be in Cameron Indoor Stadium, that that might have sealed the deal. Kathy is a former uh, college point guard. She showed resilience when she joined that team. She was a walk-on, and the coach later told her, I plan to cut you, but I saw something in your eyes. Turned out the coach was right, that by her senior year, she was the starting point guard on what was the most successful team in that university's history. So, well done, Kathy. Of course, she's, she's better known as the CEO of Deloitte, and we are extremely pleased with our relationship with Deloitte. Many of you will be going to Deloitte or came from Deloitte, and so it's fantastic to have someone who is so deeply connected uh, to the, the, the Fuqua School. And the reason why I think we're so deeply connected is because we share these values. And why Kathy has been so successful within Deloitte is because she is someone of uncompromising integrity, because she is someone who is fiercely loyal to her team, because she is someone who supports the ambitions of others and allows them to be authentic and bring their authentic selves into the workplace where she is absolutely committed to making sure that no talent sits on the sidelines when they, de they deserve the opportunity to be in the game. And so she clearly has that Team Fuqua spirit and she has the wisdom of accomplishment. We are so happy to have Kathy with us today. Kathy, they're all yours. Thank you so much, Dean Bolding, for that warm welcome, and to the distinguished faculty behind me, thank you for all of these, many of which will join Deloitte, so I'm thankful for that. But I want to welcome the family members, the parents, friends, and this is truly an honor for me to stand before you today on what is such an uh, amazing and special day. Graduates, I know you will always remember today, May 13th, 2017, the day you graduated from business school, and with it, everything you've come to love about Fuqua. The CLE teams, which I heard referred to uh, by Anna and Catherine and Chris, by the way, great, great uh, speeches, thank you. The Global Institute climbing the wall at Triangle Training. Of course, the awesome fish tacos at Nana's. Um, and I'm sure I've seen some of you, because I am a bit of a basketball junkie on ESPN as part of the infamous Cameron Crazy student section. Just want to know how you get all that body paint off your face. Uh, and I am a huge basketball fan myself, so I can appreciate the legacy of being in here uh, that is Duke basketball. But as much as today is your day, it also belongs to your families and friends, your moms and dads. I can only imagine the pride you are all feeling. I've got a daughter who's a sophomore at Villanova and a son in high school, and I'm looking forward to joining you on the other side of education. So today is a big day, and one thing I have learned is that the biggest stuff happens in life's smallest moments. For me, one of life's biggest moments was the day I got the phone call to invite me to be the CEO of Deloitte. But I never aspired to that. That big moment was the result of thousands of other everyday moments in my career when I chose to lead, to raise my hand, to take a risk, to step outside my comfort zone, stretch myself, and the same is true for all of you sitting here today. It's a big moment, and it happened because of choices you made in very ordinary moments.
the choice to spend that extra hour at the end of a long day at the Ford Library, the choice to be up before dark and get a run in so your mind would be clear for the day, and a million other choices. Which makes me think of the Blue Devils. It was fascinating to learn the Blue Devils, how they came to be. For family and friends who don't know, it was the nickname of a French military unit famous for their blue uniforms and berets and their ability to operate in any environment, under any conditions, against any foe. That adaptability is where they got their name. And like the first Blue Devils, that adaptability and willingness to take advantage of whatever the moment brings you is what got you here today to this milestone moment. And I believe being able to adapt is what will make you successful. You'll need it because I guarantee, as Catherine just talked about, life will throw you some curveballs. And how you react in those moments will define you. One of the biggest curveballs you can imagine came my way when I was 22 years old, probably younger than most of you. I had just started my career with Deloitte, and that year my dad passed away unexpectedly. We were incredibly close, and he had a significant role in shaping me into the leader I am today. We shared many passions, including basketball. He was an accomplished basketball player at St. Joseph's University in Philadelphia and was drafted by the Detroit Pistons. But my father, instead of playing basketball, went on to work, including three jobs at one time. And although my mom never went to college, she also worked and still works today at 80. Together, they sent eight kids through college. All eight of us. I'll never forget when I heard the news that he had died. It was two weeks before I would sit for the CPA exam. At that point, my mom was widowed at an age younger than I am today. And I was the oldest of the four kids still at home. My youngest brother was 12 years old. I faced a lot in those days, and I didn't do it all perfectly. I did choose to go on and get the CPA exam and got through it. I think it was my dad's encouragement for us to be leaders, not by word, but by action, that made it so natural for me to step and lead my family in, in his absence. It's clear to me now that how I responded to that situation is part of what defined me as a leader. I was quite shy back then, but I knew I had to step up and lead. And it wasn't just the big moments. It was all the ordinary moments of life in the months and years that followed and how I chose to show up for those and still show up for those with my mom, my brothers and sisters, with my husband and two kids, and in my career as well. Today, I'd like to share four things I've picked up along the way that help me make the most of the big stuff that happens in everyday moments. And this should be easy for you to remember because it spells out a word very important to you, and you'll figure it out very quickly. So the first letter is a D, <laughs> daily discipline. If it's true that life's big mo stuff happens in small moments, then it must be true that what you choose to do every day is what makes a difference. I once read that how we spend our days is how we spend our lives. This has absolutely been my experience. I became a leader not through some dramatic notion of being elevated, but by choosing to behave like a leader day in and day out, to lead openly and fairly, no matter what my official title or box said. A leader is simply someone who leads. So whatever is important to you, work on it every day. Former Navy SEAL Admiral Bill McRaven, who was born about an hour from here in Pinehurst, just published a book with his 10 lessons he learned from being a Navy SEAL. And the number one lesson if you want to change the world, start by making your bed. Now, I know you're thinking, really? I need to make my bed? But in business, this translates to if you do the small things first and get them right, the big things come easier, and you will accomplish them. And no matter what kind of day you have, and believe me, you will have tough days, you will come home, and your bed will be made. The second letter, second thing I will leave you with begins with a U, unpredictability. Class of 2017, as I stand up here today, 
I see something you and I have in common. We all have a lifetime supply of unpredictability. When I was where you are, I could have never predicted the business innovations we've seen or what direction my career would go. And I'll let you in on a secret. That unpredictability turns out to be a pretty normal thing in your career. And it's only growing. You're entering a business environment where change is the only constant, disruption is the norm. This might make you anxious, but it is also where the opportunities lie. It's where the chance to make a real and meaningful impact is. You all see it, vast improvements in computing power, globalization of markets and information, massive leaps in innovations like artificial intelligence, blockchain, all igniting what I call the fusion revolution, which is the coming together of our physical, digital, and biological worlds. It's not only impacting how companies operate, but what it means to be a professional, the how and where in the work of the future. By the way, many call it the future of work, but I call it the work of the future because the future of work sounds ominous, like there won't be any work. The work of the future sounds a lot more optimistic, like we can shape it, and I know you will help do that. When I started in professional services in the 80s, there were two tools of the trade, a pencil and a simple calculator. That's it, no fax machine, and you probably don't even use those. No email, no laptops, no Excel, no text messaging, no smart phones or tablets. And now we can't Imagine life without our smartphones or spreadsheets, or more importantly, our social media accounts, including me, by the way. Today, we have artificial intelligence doing tasks that I did as a first year at my firm, reviewing contracts and documents. We're using drones and augmented and virtual reality in business, robotics process automation, a process that took days, now takes hours or even minutes. Much can be done remotely. But you are joining, and many of you already have been in the business world, at, I think, an exciting, optimistic, and exciting, and exciting time. The unpredictability ahead of us means you can see things in a new way and create opportunities no one could have thought of before. And I know you will do that also. So D for daily discipline, U for unpredictability. Can you guess the next letter? K, and no, no, not Coach K, even though I know we're on Coach K court. It's K for keep learning. Just as it was here at Fuqua, you didn't do your best if you only showed up for one class and crammed the night before. Well, I know for some one of you, maybe that's what you did. But in life, if you want to do well on the tests that come in life's big, big moments, you have to keep learning. Be relentlessly curious to be ready for whatever the future holds. Let me give you a piece of advice that may sound counterintuitive at a commencement. Never graduate. I know parents, you want the tuition checks to stop. I understand that. But there's never a point in time where you can stop learning. Because of the innovation and disruption today, life in the future will be a series of endless software updates, change, so every one of us will be novices. We'll need new professional skills. And don't be afraid of management consulting. It's actually pretty good. Five years ago, there were hardly any awareness of data scientists. And now, we can't hire enough of them in business. Few companies had chief data and chief digital officers, chief customer experience officers, CISOs, chief information security officers, and so on. The job you want may not exist today. If you want to be able to get it, always stay curious, ask questions, never stop learning, raise your hand, push yourself, and keep learning. So finally, the letter E, enjoy the journey. I can tell you it's not always going to be easy. Life doesn't go in a straight line, and things won't be perfect. And you know what? That's okay. Don't let one setback define you. 
I will never forget one of my biggest career shifts when I was a young partner and went into a whole new group called our Capital Markets Group to work with gurus on securitization and derivatives and complex valuations and, yes, staff regressions. We do use those in the real world. And at first, it was hard to find my footing. For six weeks, I dreaded going to work. For the only time in 30 years, I didn't like my job. And I remember saying to myself, I've made a huge mistake. But I persevered. And before long, I was in hot demand with every client. I had technical skills, but on the top of that, I had the ability to make the complex simple. And that's what this exponentially changing world needs from you. This role that I had that I didn't like turned out to be a platform by which I built a very large network. And most importantly, it was that role where I met a leader who ulti ultimately became my sponsor to become CEO. So the moral of the story is from moment to moment, you never know how the big picture is going to turn out. In my experience, if you keep the faith, keep at it, you actually can enjoy the journey because it's the journey overall that defines you, not any single part of it. So there you have it, everything you needed to know about being a great leader in a world moving at an exponential pace can be spelled out in the name of this university. Daily discipline for D, unpredictability for you, keep learning and never graduate for K, and enjoy the journey, the E. So keep living those Duke values. Let that blue devil adaptability be your differentiator. That's something special in you, for, that, that in you, for those who graduated both before you, today, and who will graduate after you. I know that the blue devils here today will go far. Thinking back to those first Blue Devils, they were smart, but they were much more than that. The world cares not just about your IQ. The world cares about your passion quotient and your curiosity quotient. And I would add empathy, too. So today, celebrate where your passion, curiosity, intelligence, and empathy have gotten you. I Googled a bit on Duke Fuqua and saw the four pillars behind rethinking the boundaries of business school. There were two that I'd like to make sure you remember on this day, May 13th, 2017. The first one, will you be a leader of consequence? And the second one, what will you change? Do yourselves a favor right now. Stop, breathe, look around, take this all in. This is a big day, and if you keep on paying attention to small things every day, embrace uncertainty, Keep learning, enjoy the journey, and I'm absolutely confident you will be ready and that your small moments will add up to the big stuff of life that you want to achieve. And remember, take care of yourself along the way. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Thank you, good luck to you all, and let's go Duke. Thank you, Kathy, for those extremely wise remarks. She has received many, many accolades over the years, such as being one of the most powerful women in the world multiple times by, by Fortune magazine. But I'd like to give her our highest accolade, which is Kathy truly is a leader of consequence. And for that, we thank you. And we'd like to show our gratitude in more than a symbolic way, but with some substance with a Coach K signed basketball. Yes. <laughs> she asked if we could put the baskets down so she can shoot. So, uh, okay. All right, so now we, we switch gears in the, in the ceremony to recognition of the graduates, and I'd like to ask Russ Morgan to step forward. Thank you, guys, and uh, congratulations to all of you. Died.
Thank you all. Um, that has unbelievable meaning, both because it's uh, arguably, I guess, it'll be the last time we're together, and I'll get to hear that. So that's been special um, across the two years. But also, um, the fact that we're in Cameron, and I get that cheer. I, um, I spent a lot of time in here as an undergrad, and nobody would have cheered for anything that I didn't hear at that point. So <laughs> thank you. So it has been an absolute pleasure to spend the last two years with you. Um, I, I got to speak with you Thursday a little bit and just wanted to build off of that and first say thank you to all of you. Um, using the language of, of Kat Carter, you guys made some choices with your care bucks and um, a lot of them went our way. So obviously the money, but more important than that, um, you made us better. You gave us your time, your energy, your passion, and, and you truly made us better. And so um, on behalf of everybody at Fuqua, I want to thank you for that. So before we recognize the Fuqua Scholars and the, the Second Year Award winners, um, I want to share a few comments with you. We've had a number of occasions to celebrate over the last month, and as I've interacted with a number of you, um, you, you've had this natural curiosity about your class, and so the, the general question I get is, um, are all classes the same? What distinguishes our class? And so I thought I would, I would, I would give you a little bit of an answer to that, and, and my answer is that actually there is a lot of variance class to class, and that each class is generally defined by the things that you're passionate about. And for your class, I see the confluence of, of two real passions that have come together nicely. And, and one of the, the first of those has been talked about a fair amount already, but you've truly embraced Team Fuqua and this idea of collective diversity. And you've sought ways to extend inclusion through the conversations and activities to better appreciate all the differences that you have. The second one, no one's brought up, but you've exhibited this tremendous love and this propensity to travel. And, and, and as I was bringing these two things together, I thought you, 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 you were going to need some help with this. And so I thought I would, I would use a couple of quotes to connect these two and why it's significant to me and why it really defines you for me. And so the first quote is, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. The second one is, it seems that the more places I see and experience, the bigger I realize the world to be. The more I become aware of, the more I realize how relatively little I know of it, how many places I still have to go, how much more there is to learn. So those quotes are from two very different people, separated in time by about a century and a half. The first one is a 19th century author, Mark Twain. And the second one is Anthony uh, Bourdain, the contemporary celebrity chef. So it, this, this is, these two uh, very eclectic people also representing you have helped define this for me. Um, they capture to me the, the character and the promise of your class. Hopefully your appetite to see the world, to experience other cultures, to learn and grow and continue and help and appreciate others. And you'll aid, will aid you in your efforts to change the world by improving the lives of others. So I encourage you, please stay curious, and please continue your travels, especially back here, to see us after you leave here. All right, so now, now is the time where we get to, to individually recognize some of you. And so first, for each graduating class, we recognize the top 10% of the class based on their academic achievement. These students are designated as Fuqua Scholars, and this year's scholars are noted in your program. With the 2017 Fuqua Scholars, please stand to be recognized. Thank you. Second, the students in the graduating class and the Fuqua deans dominate a select group of students for a number of awards based on their contributions to the Fuqua community. These awards and the recipients are also noted in your program. At this time, I'd ask the second year award recipients, please stand to be congratulated. There are more of you than that. <laughs> 
Great, thank you. It's now time to individually recognize each of our graduates. We'll ask each of our graduates to come forward to be recognized and congratulated by Dean Bolding, Kathy Engelbert, and me. At this time, I'd like to ask Catherine Shipper, the Thomas F. Keller Professor of Business Administration, to read the names of our graduating PhD students. Esther E. Sackett. Yu <laughs> Eel Park. Yu Chang. Thank you, Catherine. Now I'd like to ask Shane DeColey, our Associate Dean for Faculty Engagement, to please come forward and read the names of our graduating MBA students. He'll be assisted by Cheryl Dirks, Associate Dean of Career Management. Christopher James Castro. Anna Rose Catone. Catherine Nicole Carter. Catherine Mills. Dion Aviki. Ayodeji Augustus Abatoye. Okay. Emmanuel Chakamwike Abolo. Eliza Sarah Adelson. Caitlin Akala Balasak. Tamar Ariel. Abdullah Khalid Al Rashid. Christopher Troy Barry. David Morgan Barnes. Savesh Agarwal. Saksham Agarwal. Siddharth Agarwal. Brian Ross Burnett. Nandita Berry. <laughs> Catherine Alyssa Beck. <laughs> Melissa Dawn Bebb. <laughs> Claudia Lane Adao. Kylie Christopher Bennett. Barnett. <laughs> Catherine Stacy Bishop. Joel Michael Bergstein. David Logan Bisudan. Matthew Anthony Barclay. Ron B. <laughs> Ron 
Abdul Rahman Saud Al Suhimi. Michael Angelo Balestrino. Derek Odell Basal. Herbert Blandon. Michael Ross Bernstein. Sebastian Abud Lennon. Emilio Aldunate Bengolia. Gonzalo Saenz de Santa Maria. Alejandro Weber, joint degree with Sanford. Sergio Hudson. Francisco Patuelli. Jose Ignacio Reed Tago. Dennis Matthew Bartlett, joint degree Nicholas School of Environment. Andrew Robert Silos, joint degree Nicholas School of the Environment. Theodore Herman, joint degree Nicholas School of the Environment. Heather Renee Wiggins, joint degree Nicholas School of the Environment. Ramsey Talcott Meggs, Joint degree, Nicholas School of the Environment. Andrew Scott Klinkman, joint degree, Nicholas School of Environment. Daniel Mahoney Suits, joint degree, Nicholas School of Environment. Elise Mond Johnson, joint degree, Nicholas School of Environment. Samuel John Matias, joint degree, Nicholas School of Environment. Sydney Edward McLaurin, Jr., joint degree, Nicholas School of Environment. Rachel Marie Borowski. Lauren Elizabeth Day. Sarah Adair Clayton. Rachel Elizabeth Clare. Jongmin Bay. Matthew Charles Borman. John Cromwell Bell. The fifth. <laughs> William Scott Brown. Alexis Giselle Burbank. Courtney Elizabeth Cobb. Gregory Richard Ciccarelli. Susanna Margarita Cadenas Vogel. Marcella Loise Ancona. Inessa Bekiri. Usashi Chowdhury.
Irina Chapugina. Leah Marie De Costa. Erica Renee Marie Irvin. Aditya Jagdish Dave. Deepti Lakshmi Desai. Jonathan Alexander Bock. Ross Thomas Boomer. Shakira Deepak Chanri. Maria Therese Cauchy. Natalie Dawn Bray. Wesley Robert Day. Colin Douglas Brady, Joint Degree, School of Public Policy. Seth Pettit Brown, Joint Degree, School of Public Policy. Blair Emery Lanier, Joint Degree, School of Public Policy. Yeah. Alan Lanahan Zaracina, Joint Degree, Sanford School of Public Policy. Tracy Lynn Cohen. Esteban Campos. James Alex Brown. Francisco Juan Campos. Jason Max Courier. Christian Kish. Adelaide Lucinda Fortune Belk. Benjamin Raleigh Chadwick. Robert Muro Benbo. Brendan Thomas Casey. Anish Chakravarti. Mm -hmm. Kiran Kasha. Andrew Silviano Kekka. Brad Michael Bankos. Donald Keith Dotson. Matthew John Conley. Kelvin Human Chen. Yali Kanani. Javier Cortez Infantes. Sheen Chen. Hang Tu Ku. Zenhard Siegfried Dedekind. Ashida Anil. Owen McGowan Boyce. Yeah. 
Etienne Borges Lendira Aruda. Flavio Cairoli. Paolo Cesar. Raymond Chu. John Chen. Marjan Jane Eastham Goldbaum. David Alexander Dolmage. Emily Thompson Edwards. Elizabeth Hawkins Casey. Claire Barnett Gibson. Marshall Friedman. Yarden Engel. Saad Dereys. Bakit Esanaliev. Austin Scott Jengalevsky. Denny Lee East Jr. Gitanjali Sunil Duzici. Daniel Goltz. Scott Michael Duncan. Christopher Ryan Havner. Elizabeth Finnegan. Carlin Green Geyer. Tracy Hahn. Madison Lindsay Gilbert. Diego Granados. David Anthony Gross. Inayel Guerrero Cabrales. Daniel Warren Givens. Russell Paul Glorioso. Jose Ignacio Diaz Granados Guerrero. Pablo Jose Diaz Echeverria, Joint Degree Nicholas School of Environment. Robert Daniel Gardner. Jason Allen Grunsky. Bruce Patrick Frank. Garrett Brent Graves. Joseph Brandon Hansen. Mark Aaron Hammer. Guy Gabriel. Marty Franco. Danilo Canillero da Costa Haliz. Andreas Flores. Eric Harrington Hurd Forsyth.
Nicole Catherine Guz. Emily Ann Hancock. Casey Alexis Haas. Daniel Joseph Kish. Ryland Thomas Collins. Kevin Michael Gannon. Sarah Margaret Fallon. James Harold Fisher III. Jessica Fan. Michael Robert Gravel. Bachman O. Junichi Fujimori. Tracy Guo. David Hans Jacob. Matthew Stephen Heitzer. Brittany Erin Holland. Megan Alexandra Huskins. Sarah Christine Ingerson. Jonathan Scott Knoth. Walter Edward Hoffman III. Shao Yi Hu. Asaf Canary. Erica Jacqueline Simone Pines. <laughs> John Edward Hughesman, the third. Sanderson Walker Hull. Rowan Huda. Shivani Kumar. <laughs> Evelyn Kim. Danish Jaway. Shreyas Anar Jayant. Ahmed Nitin Kolkani. Sanchit Kumar. Amar Kumar Jain. Mohammed Hassan Khalil. Shayla Karalich. Douglas Lee Jacobs. William Carlisle Jackson. Andrew Dean Jones. Kohei Kawata. Pyle Kapoor. Anant Jory. Noel Elizabeth Kelly. James Jordan Coslow. David Joseph Kreft. 
Justin Matthew Heron, Zachary Daniel Honeycutt, Nicholas Ryan Kirby, Christopher Nolan Costyla, Adela Jang. Daniel Chong. Nan Jung. Seho Kim. Min Kim. PJ Kim. Roxanne L. Herrera. Andrew Douglas Kalman. William Stewart Connectley. Raquel Lima Huda. Julia Faye Korn. <laughs> Kylie Marie Johnston. <laughs> Melissa Sue Hodges. <laughs> Yu Shou Huang. Yi He Jung. Shan Jong. Udit Jan. Valerie Elise Jeffries. Justin Robert Kersey. Ryan Kellogg. David Lai. David Owen Lavander. Blake Allen Lindgren Jr. Dear Susan Matthew. Kelsey Morgan Martin. Kristen Courtney McDonald. Laura Teresa McCarthy. Rachel Monserrate McGee. Anne Mills Lassiter. Andrew Chong Lee. Che Michael Martinez. Steve Hajin Lee. Shuo Lee. Johnson Lee. Jason Isaac Lim. Anthony Ray Lewis. William David Martin. Enrique Sene de Oliveira Lino. Niels Lindquist. <laughs> Juan Luo. Matthew Bryant Lowell. Michael Vincent McKeon. Kelsey Anderson Lundgren. 
Richard Earl Langren III. Jake Lee. Kanti Lee Pulsa. Paul Lee. Soman Lee. Junaidi Liam. Liana Lim. Tuan An Lee. Yuichi Matsuama. Yang Lu. Zuniki Mada. Maxim Mekarov. James Nolan Marino. Bill Xiao Lee. Bob Lian. Kyron Devon McEwen. Monica Madrid. Christina Lowe. Amanda Marinero McEwen. Anna Savorin. Amir Zur. Danielle Vidal Garcia. Kareem Issa. Abhishek Nilan Shu. Andrew Anchen Chuang. Andrew Edward David Klein. Sean Sinisgali. Andrew Robert Tuttle. Eric G. Robinson. Julio Cesar Fulao. Eduardo Reberiero Antillon. Augustin Juan Sanchez. Jennifer Megan McGann. Luis Emilio Suarez. Ayapa Maravanda. Maurizio Martinovic. Maria Victoria Labantera. Jorge Rodriguez Daliman. Sara Latora Bohinani. Beatriz Cecilia Martinez. Maria Peverelli. Alejandro Coneo.
Juan Mangiarotti. Holds the whole thing, or no, Roberto? Ignacio de la Portilla. Ezequiel Monita. Nabil Makwa. David Alexander Prieto. Danielle Passado. Manuel Ortiz. Nicholas Perez Reyna. Kelly Ann Munoz. Jennifer Nicole Miller. Hillary Adams Nichols. Shubi Naraya Niswami. Nicole Annette Ponton. Savannah Alexa Onwache. Andrew James Maselli. Jackson Morgan. Nehal Modak. Anand Mahajan. Daniel Joseph Newell. Deborah Janice Oregel. Gregory Douglas Omond. Sultanbek Umarzakov. Megan Ashley O'Grady. Nicole Rose Page. Michael Matthew Parent. Rebecca Hunter Morgan. Corey Cassidy Meadows. Maya Pillar. Michael Thomas Putnam. Matthew Alden Phelps. Patrick Michael O'Shea. Emma Farm. Brian Neal. Jeffrey Edward Parrish. Samuel Durham Pierce. Dima Perkis. Miles Traver Newman. Ching Peng. Annie K. Panda. Michael Joseph Polk. Joanna Perret. Trang Hong Viet Nguyen. Benita Ochadina. Benita 
Donna Shaolan Pu. Maria Pia Morente Perez Rias. Muriel Montero Aula. Marcelo Mello. Bruno Pereira. Jared Haywood Nobles. Taiwo Omishore. Kenochuku Okoli. Abatunde Oke. Pragya Paramita. Brinda Panchao. Kota Nagashi. Alexander Nicholas Seeger. Monique Stone. Kira Sullivan. Arjun Ratan. Alejandra Rossi. Binara Ray. Linda Francesca Rosenti. Abigail Thorpe Stoller. Trista Susan Zox. Sena Udagawa. Taisha Sarah Rivas. Rivas, sorry. Taisha Sarah Rivas. Natalia Suarez. Nishant Isao Samuel. Hakim Ayo Rahman. Melody Chow. Brian Dodge Rowe. Serum Rowe. Ty Rowe. Anthony Joseph Ramota. William Roberts Ratliff. Bilal Sheikh. Petrani Supastian Pong. Yo Sugimoto. Yu Chen Shen. Tyler Michael Robinson. Robert Anthony Rutkowski. Alexander Bruce Skull. Samuel Charles Shapiro. 
Robert Howard Sherry. Juan Diego Ruiz. Rochelle Ramdeni. Hunter H. Rudd. Krista Nicole Register. Catherine Elizabeth Ramsey. Kimberly Ann Wayland Rungi. Jayup Song. Ki Hoon Sung. Kelly Shi. Christina Rose. James Robert Ruggiero. Tyler Banks Rainey. Ryan Peter Steve. Caleb Henry Stevenson. Timothy Scales. Scott Chu. Michael Joseph Ryback. Elizabeth Ann Rybacki. Abraham Joshua Saldana Jr. Christopher John Sheehan. Christian Santos. Nachiket Renavde. Yevgeny Stashenko. Ivan Tomo. Somat to Toibayev. Scott Joseph Vetter. David Michael Working. Thomas Robert Wagner. Gordon James Vanskoy. Alejandro Roca Risco. Alejandra Inez Guillen Sucre. Claude Pelant. Abigail Sandra Van de Bogert. Nicholas Derwood Williams. Travis John Whittick. Matthew Von Bargen. Larry Sungman Yu. Vedant Toma. Sidhant Tuari. Matthew Philip Thacker. Keneal Dinesh Thacker. Nandita Vasavan. L. Sheltan Shi. John Lockwood Walker. 
Hope Sarah Taft. Alexandra Trimble. Joseph Gregory Watt. Adrian Newton Wilson, Jr. Christopher William Wells. William Edward Waller. Enrique Valdez Vial. Lucas Weiler. Nywen Wong. Wei Wong. Xu Ye Chao. Dana Phil Medi. Rebecca Amy Wolf. Lynn Sia, Joint Degree Nicholas School of Environment. CC Sylvia Yang. Philip Seng. Joel De Jesus Vargas. Max Weber Zamor. Vinicius Guerra Torres. Eduardo Tang. Caio Zamonero. Pela Zhong. Yuji Chiao. Wei Wu. Anning Tang. John Yue Zhao. Rachel Zhang. Ching Yi Zhou. William Augustus Wyatt. Andrew Jeffrey Wong. Congratulations. Could I ask the students to please rise? So I was going to ask everyone to please join me in congratulating the Fuqua School of Business Class of 2017, but that seems unnecessary, but please. Okay.
So I'm going to ask the students to stay standing for a bit because I'd like to speak to them directly for one last time. I'm not going to miss this opportunity. For the friends and family, we're so grateful that you could be with us today. It makes this day so much more special to have you with us, to the faculty and staff, to have you here to recognize the graduates on this day makes it all the more special. Thank you to you. And a very funny announcement, please don't panic. Could Barbara Farrar please go to the media room at the north end of the stadium, that's over there, at the end of the ceremony. Uh, so, for the, for the friends and family, if you could all please stay seated until the last student has recessed out of the building to give them their, their special moment. I'd appreciate that. And then we'll all join together in the Fox Center to continue this great celebration. So now, a couple of things that, that I'd like to, to say to the graduates. Every graduating class always asks, is there anything unique about our class? I've learned not to literally answer that question, but instead to understand that what they're asking is, where do we rank and are we your favorite class ever? <laughs> so let me deal with that, which is, you are my favorite class ever. Far and away, my favorite class ever. Recognize, however, that next year, you should hope that I say the same thing to that graduating class. Because our ambition is to get better and better and better every year so that I can genuinely say that. So in terms of are you distinctive, I think a number of people have, have stated the obvious, that you are different that you've done something that has changed the school forever in a positive way, that you've left your legacy in a way that will not be forgotten and that others will build on. And the simplest way I can put that is that you pierced the Fuqua bubble. You brought the outside in to our experience. That wasn't always comfortable, but what that means is as you go from in to the outside, you are so much readier to face the issues that you will surely confront in whatever organization, whatever company you go to. And so I thank you for having done that. The other thing that I think is, is very distinctive is I have never, ever seen a class that has eaten so many chicken fingers. <laughs> I don't know if I should thank you for that, but it's distinctive. But thank you. Thank you for what you've brought. So now, having thanked you, I, of course, want to make some requests of you. And I'm not going to ask you for money, at least not right now. I will many, many times over the course of your lifetime. And I will be doing you a favor. So get ready for that. But these are the requests. The first one is, as you celebrate this day, your natural instinct is going to be to turn to each other because you've gone through an incredible journey together that's created these remarkable bonds, remarkable strength and capability, and you're going to want to acknowledge each other and share the moment with each other, and that's fantastic. But keep in mind that it's not just the people in your class that brought you to this moment, it's all the people sitting around us who also got you here, and many of the people who can't be with us today who got you here. And so if you could, please show your appreciation for the people in your lives that made this remarkable day possible. Thank them often and profusely. The second thing is that we really want you to stay connected to the school. 
You've moved from graduate to alum. And in that transition, you've joined a much bigger community, an extraordinary community, a community of achievement, renown, a community that is full of interesting, fun people. And with that privilege of joining that broader Duke community comes some responsibility. You have a responsibility to make sure that you stay connected in a way that you can give back to the people that will follow you. And I don't just mean stay connected by sending us money, although that's good, but I mean stay connected, come back and recruit, come back and mentor students, share your experiences, provide the network that they need as they're in your position, give them the advice that they need, give them the comfort that they occasionally will need, but make sure that you give back to those who will follow you because it's only beginning in terms of a lifetime membership in the Fuqua community. The third thing that I'm going to ask of you, your, your instinctive response will be like, why are you even asking? That's obvious. And the request is, stay connected to each other. And you may think that's an obvious thing because you love each other, you've established these deep and enduring bonds that should last a lifetime. But the reality is all of you are going to leave here and go to different parts of the world with different pulls on your time. And it's going to be easy to let the relationships that you've built during this time decay. These relationships, which are so phenomenal, will not persist unless you nurture them. Please pay attention to your classmates. Stay connected to your classmates in every way you possibly can. And when you travel the world, take advantage of the free rooms, the free food, connect. The fourth thing is that I want to give you some personal advice that my father shared with me when I graduated. And the, the advice was, go out into the world and be chewing gum. Like, thanks, Dad. And if you think about chewing gum, it's not maybe the thing that you would aspire to be. It's like chewing gum gets stuck on the bottom of someone's shoe. Chewing gum gets stuck under a table somewhere, and it's forgotten. And that's actually a good message for you, which is make sure you keep yourself relevant. Make sure that you reinvent yourself so you don't get left behind. And make sure you understand that there will be times in your life where you will feel like this is a tough time. I am the gum on the bottom of someone's shoe and that everyone before you has been in that place and can overcome that. So the negatives of chewing gum are a good reminder of what we need to do in our lives to stay relevant. But then think about other aspects of chewing gum. What, what can it do? What can you do with a, a piece of chewed up gum? Well, you can fill in the gaps. You can be the substance that holds people together. You can be flexible. You can stretch and grow. And you can be resilient because chewing gum has a shelf life of, I don't know, a billion years. And so you can hang in there. And so go out and be chewing gum and never, ever, ever lose your Fuqua flavor. Okay, one more thing. Just as you've made a difference in our lives, we have one last request of you, which as you move into the next stage of your life journey, you have an obligation, you have this opportunity which leads to an obligation to make a difference in the lives of others seize that opportunity to do things that matter. 
lead a life of success, lead a life of success and significance. And we talked about happiness today. You may remember that I talked about happiness two years ago or a year and a half ago, whenever, at orientation and said, be at a place where you can be happy. And I hope you've had some fun in that sense of happy. But when I talked about happiness, I talked about it in the sense that Aristotle meant it, which is make full use of your talents along the lines of excellence. Be the most you can possibly be. And so for all of you, I wish you lives of success and happiness. And remember, your success is our success. Your happiness is our happiness. And so the simplest way to put this is go forth and be the leaders of consequence the world so badly needs. Thank you very much. That concludes the ceremony. I look forward to seeing everybody in the Fox Center. Thank you. Thank you.